Hello everyone, my name is EbelsVox and welcome to a video on Windows 8.1 Preview. This is a preview of the service pack for Windows 8, which is kind of Microsoft's way of making up for the kind of rocky launch to their new operating system version. In this video I'm going to be showing you some of the changes made from the original Windows 8 with Windows 8.1 Preview and a couple little nitpicky things and a couple issues I have had. now. As far as desktop goes, if you're running it on a desktop, Windows 8.1 will allow you to automatically boot to your desktop environment so you don't gotta worry about going through the, you know, app menu and stuff like that if you're used to, you know, more of a Windows 7 like desktop experience. Other apps and modifications allowed you to do that in Windows 8 that most people have already set up, so that won't impact very many people other than those just starting out with Windows 8. There is now a start button on the taskbar here. However, unlike this taskbar, you know, the start menu button replacement I was using called Pokey or Start 8 or any of those, it does not bring up a classic Windows 7 style start menu. It just takes you to the Windows 8 Metro start menu. That may not be good enough for most people, and unfortunately, since Windows Metro does not interact with Windows Explorer, there's no going to like start my computer. So I still have the File Explorer app icon pinned on the taskbar so I can go up to this PC, which is the new desktop, or the new My Computer. For whatever reason, which I do like the idea, but I know it's going to piss a lot of people off because it's change and change is bad and people aren't used to change, but Windows 8.1 Preview has merged your previous libraries with my computer and they're calling it this PC which frank frankly makes a bit more sense to me instead of having your separate libraries which were set up documents music and movies and videos folders and stuff like that however documents is not set to where I want my documents set so I'm going to change that by going to location move going to my Dropbox and then my documents folder there select folder apply no I do not want to move the folders hit OK and that will take me to my actual documents folder. But instead of having separate libraries and my computer icons and stuff, they've combined them into one to make things a bit more convenient. A thing to note that for whatever reason in Windows 8.1, Explorer loading up or like apps trying to load up just the general my computer screen take forever for some reason now. And I'm running a really good PC. I'm not sure what's up with them. But this actually makes things quite a bit more convenient. However, when my muscle memory for the past ever of Windows is used to go on my computer and the C drive or my second drive, I'm going to end up in some weird places for a little while until I get used to it. As will most people probably. Another change they have made, and this one I'm not entirely sure why, but the charms on the right hand side, if I can get them to pull up here. The charms, the charms, the char- hello? The charms are not wanting to pull up. Okay. And get them to pull up on this screen. There we go. They lowered them. Originally they were centered here on this right hand bar. Now they're lower. I'm guessing because since you have to pull up from the bottom it's quicker to get to them. But other than that I'm really not sure what's going on here. <laughs> I thought it was just an issue on my computer but I don't know to be honest. Alright, and if you go to change PC settings, you actually have a different set of menus and options and stuff than you originally had with Windows 8. Here you can set your account picture, your lock screen picture, if you use a picture password, the picture for that. And then you get into some, um, some settings for some of the new settings. And it gives you things that it suggests you change, such as, I don't have a default mail app. I can choose that, click it, except I do already have a default mail app, so that needs to go away. For whatever reason, it does not detect that the Windows 8 calendar app is a calendar app. Don't know what the hell's wrong with that, to be honest. And you can set your apps here. Thankfully, for Windows 8 running on a desktop, it does detect desktop apps as, quote, apps for email, music player, things like that, so you don't gotta worry about that. But these are just your top settings, so you have your picture options, and then this is for the syncing. You can tell it how to upload photos. I tell it best. Quiet hours for notifications. I have those turned off. And then app sizes, notifications, things like that. 
We go to PC and devices, you get more into the detail of your lock screen. You can now set a slideshow as your lock screen and choose the folder. Which apps show up on your lock screen? Which apps will show alarms? That's a new thing. Then you can use the camera from the lock screen as well. So if your computer's locked, people can take pic goofy pictures and you will find them. You also have display options. Instead of just doing the screen resolution option on the desktop, you now have this option in the Windows 8 menu, which is pretty interesting. There is a devices menu as always to show you the devices. You have some customization apps for the mouse, touchpad, typing. Changing what happens when you navigate to the corners and edges of the screen. Power and sleep options. Autoplay options and for whatever reason, it doesn't detect what you had set originally because it treats Windows 8.1, and there's not even anything here. It treats Windows 8.1 as a new Windows install, kind of. So you can set those however you want. And then your PCM info, which just kind of shows some specs about your PC. I'm pretty sure this product key is the same product key for everybody who downloads Windows 8.1 preview, so don't try and steal it. Or I mean, there's really no point. Your PC name, how much RAM you have, 64-bit, processor power, things like that. Okay. Now if we go into the account options, the account picture, and make a new one, the account tied to it, sign-in options, password, picture password, pin, and then you can add other accounts to your device. Next is the SkyDrive. With Windows 8.1 preview, you have the options of setting up everything to sync to your SkyDrive account. SkyDrive is now completely integrated into the Windows 8.1 operating system. You have 7 gigs available free, kind of like Dropbox, and you can buy more storage and set up additional plans. Now, by default, everything is set to sync to SkyDrive, and then you can customize it here. I have it set to upload photos at best quality, not to upload videos. Meter connections only apply to devices that work on cell phone signals, which th my desktop does not. Uh, tell it to save things to SkyDrive by default. That's actually pretty useful, especially on an RT tablet where I want things to sync over to my desktop. And then sync settings. This is where you can customize everything. Sync things on this PC, of course. Backup things that aren't synced yet, yes. Your start screen. This is something I would absol absolutely recommend you turn off unless you just happen to have two of the exact same computer for whatever freaking reason. And I will explain that in a second as I get through these. Appearance, such as your lock screen, colors, desktop personalization. I've loved that. That's been in there since Windows 8 started, and I absolutely love that. I can keep the same wallpaper and lock screen across my tablet and desktop. You can even sync which apps are actually installed as well as the data within it. That's pretty cool. So if you install an app on your desktop, it'll install on your tablet when you load it up. And now you can sync your web browser pages. Obviously, Wind Internet Explorer is the only really integrated browser for this, but it's still pretty cool. I can have a tablet open at school on my tab, or a tab, yeah. I can have a tab open on my tablet at school and then send it to my desktop. Then language, passwords, ease of access, file explorer settings, you know, the usual. And then metered connections is a pretty big deal, but I can't really imagine anybody using a Windows device on cell phone signal, other than phones, which have completely different options here. Now, the start screen tile layout settings. I would absolutely recommend that nobody have that set. I had that set up just when I was trying things out, and it just destroyed both my desktop and my tablet. The reason for this being is it literally tries syncing your tile placement and which apps you have where across all your devices. I have a Windows Surface RT, which runs Windows 8 RT, not the full desktop version, and my desktop. My desktop has desktop apps, as well as Windows 8 apps, and games that aren't going to be on my Windows RT. My Windows RT only has Windows RT apps. So trying to sync this across the tablet, just create, and the tablet back across this, just completely destroyed the start menu, and it will pretty much do that for anybody. So, as I said, I highly recommend you keep that turned off. Search and apps, kind of the usual settings, they've just put it all together. Notifications, I think the quiet hours thing is a new thing, and so I have disabled that because if I'm on the computer, I want to be able to receive notifications. How much space your apps are taking up, and holy crap, my apps are taking up a lot of space, 91 gigs. And then your default for basic file types. 
Then you have back to your usual settings, privacy, as far as that goes, network, update and recovery, etc. Now, there are new start menu customization options. There are new start menu customization options and new start menu options in general. As you may notice, my start menu looks a little bit different than the regular Windows 8 start menu. I'm able to have more tiles vertically across and horizontally across the start menu. There are these smaller tiles now. The background is different and acts a bit different. And we have this button down here. Now to change around your start menu, you can right click and go to customize. And this is where you can rearrange your tiles, rename your groups, which works a lot more efficiently now, and then use the new tile size options. Now in order to show you the tile size options, I'm going to use a tile like this, which is the big tile. Right click it or in the customize menu, go to resize. This is a kind of new button. It used to be make small or make big uh, or something like that. Now it's resize. You have three options for this one, wide, medium, or small. Wide is the full rectangle that takes up two squares worth. Medium's the one square. And then small, oh nope, don't uninstall. Small is this tiny little square. And I'm gonna make this back to wide and go show you. Like these. So these you actually get to have take up, you four apps take up the entirety of one regular square tile. Which is incredibly useful for apps you don't need the full picture for and to save some space on your screen. I absolutely love that. One more thing about this I did want to show you. If you choose to uninstall an app, let's uninstall TED Talks HD. Uninstall. By default, it can uninstall it from this PC as well as anything that's set up to sync from it. So if I just decide this app is crap, I absolutely don't want to use it, I can uninstall it from this computer as well as my tablet at the same time. Or if I choose, hey, I just don't want it on this device, and choose only this PC, click uninstall, and it will only uninstall it from this PC while still leaving it installed on my tablet. That's pretty neat in my opinion. Now, there's this arrow down here. You can access this by clicking the arrow or on a tablet, swipe up from the bottom here, and it takes you to the My App, you know, the full apps list of all your desktop programs as well as Windows 8 apps and then use this arrow or swipe up to get back up there. Seems pretty simple, but this was actually not very easy to find in the original Windows 8, for whatever reason. Now if we, now if we go over to your charms again, which of course is going to be very difficult for me to pull up for whatever reason. Don't know why it hates me today. Now look, okay, so this explains the charms. You pull, up, you pull them up from the top, it sorts them up here, pull them down from the bottom, it lowers it. So I guess that kind of explains the relocation, even though I don't necessarily agree with it. You go to sit in the settings charm and personalize. You get more background options. You get new pictures, and I'm kind of frustrated, but I can't find the original picture I had set for my background. I don't know if that is somehow located somewhere else or if those are gone now. And then you get to actually change the color scheme of it a bit more than you could before. You get an accent color and the background color, and you get to change those to your liking. And then you have the option over here of doing just a solid color, or your desktop wallpaper as the background as well. I don't necessarily like having that, because it just doesn't look right with those apps, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. I also don't, I don't know, this blue feels kind of painful, but I'm going to roll with it for right now. Just to show it off. Now, as I mentioned with the SkyDrive, if you had, for example, I had, hello, yep, the, overall my experience with this new SkyDrive in in integration has been very unpleasant. I've had lots of permission issues, compatibility issues, and things like that. However, I think the source of that might actually come from, I have Office 2013 installed, which installs, or installed the desktop version of SkyDrive with the free 7 gigs of space to sync up my Word documents and things like that. However, how Windows handles that system changed with Windows 8.1, and it created, which I will show you in my computer here, or this PC, it changed how SkyDrive is set up. Originally, your SkyDrive was a folder like your Dropbox on a hard drive, and then I had it set in my favorites here, and you can save to it, and then it, the app, like Dropbox or BitCasa here, would automatically upload to your SkyDrive. Now, with Windows 8.1, 
being integrated, it's its own navigation tree. And when you go to save something in Word, blah, 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 and you tell it to save automatically to your SkyDrive, it is literally just uploading it straight to the cloud. It's not saving it to... Don't save. It's saving it to this cloud storage. It's not actually saving it anymore to this folder system I had set up. However, if you do put files in this filter system, if you still have it, it will upload it to your cloud. That creates some permission and compatibility issues that I was running into. For example, my school folder for this fall semester, I originally had in my SkyDrive because I wanted it to be synced up between my tablet and my desktop because I take my tablet to school and I use my desktop at home. Hang on, I'm trying to get this set back up to hope that it works. But when I was working on this paper earlier today, I saved, you know, the quick draft with just like the title and stuff to the physical SkyDrive folder as I am used to. And then whenever I went to save again, it told me it couldn't save it there and kept asking me to save in different places. I tried to recreate this issue on video before and it did not work out so well. However, I did get a permission issue from just trying to open up a document. But clearly it's a little bit inconsistent and there's some permission issues. So if you have a similar situation to me, I would suggest just kind of leaving your folder alone on wherever you stored it, just to keep it safe, because you never know if you delete that, if it'll delete all your files. And just work within your cloud SkyDrive here and within the default saving for Microsoft Office. So that's basically Windows 8.1 preview in a nutshell. Lots of strange and interesting changes, but should, once they get them worked out in the final version, make your Windows 8 experience a bit better nonetheless. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know if there's anything specific about Windows 8.1 you would like to know that I have not covered. Like what this minus button does here. Oh, that zooms you out of your start menu so you can view the whole thing as one giant map which actually doesn't serve any purpose as I discovered a long time ago unless you have just like groups and groups and groups just going on forever and then you'd of course need to find one over here but when you only have a reasonable amount of apps you can't launch from here this doesn't really serve any any purpose other than being like ooh look I have all these apps pinned to my start menu whoa yeah that's about it Hope you enjoyed the video guys, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.